Today is July 10th and we finally pulled the scamp out of storage and we're going to give her her spring, well, a little late for spring, but her summer wash because she's pretty dirty. So don't know the way to the world. Slow you down. And if you search for the meaning of life, it won't be found. So take your insecurities and leave them all behind. Let's learn to make the most of our time. This is our 2012 16 foot scamp. We have been the owners of her since the fall of 2019 and between us and the previous owners she has seen quite a bit of use. Now since we live in a tiny house community we are not allowed to keep the scamp parked by the tiny house. We have to put her in a storage lot and there's quite a bit of trees over there so she does get dirty. Oh my goodness. Oh. The good thing is the seals are looking really good. I was walking around the other day checking them and they actually look like they're doing well. But, oh my gosh, so dirty. Now we do have a cover for this camp which would help tremendously, but we didn't put it on this year. We were always hoping to get one more trip in. Coming off. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to soap right now too. The rules of the community where we live is that you can't wash your car or your RV at your lot. So we usually take the scamp to the car wash and this actually works really well because the high power washer and <laughs> the scrubber with all of the soap is great for reaching all around the scamp and getting all of this grime off. After we scrub off all of the grime, we will usually put a coat of wax on and that has helped to keep her cleaner and shinier. Even though she's 10 years old, the scamp will still shine up really nicely when we give her a good wash and wax. But that's going to be a task for another day because we have some interior work that we want to get done before our first trip. Today is basically an RV maintenance day. Pet unwinterize the water system. He is flushing water through right now with a little bit of bleach in it to sterilize our fresh water system from sitting all winter. And um, this has been going on for a little while because of course we had to run to the store because we didn't have any bleach. <laughs> Makes every project take longer. I'm working on a few different projects on the inside and um, I have my little checklist of stuff that we're going to get done for this season. So it's a beautiful day out and it would have been a great day to be camping instead of doing RV maintenance and prep for the season, but that is how it goes when you have an RV. I think a lot of people don't realize that having an RV is not just going to beautiful campsites and having campfires and everything is perfect you are actually giving up a lot of weekends and a lot of time as well as a lot of money to the regular maintenance and upkeep of your rig because there's a lot of moving parts on these things. They get rattled on a regular basis when you're going down the road. So things are going to break, things are going to get replaced. Um, you're going to want to update things to make the space more functional, which is a lot of what we do, especially when you have a really small camper. You need things to be in just the right place so that you don't get irritated constantly that you're trying to find something or that you're in each other's way when you're trying to do certain tasks. So there's a lot that goes into just fine tuning the layout and the organization system that you're using. And I think a lot of people, especially if you're watching videos on YouTube of people who have RVs and go RVing, they are mostly sharing the fun stuff, the camping next to a river and beautiful mountains in the background and perfect weather. They're not sharing the time, effort and money that they put into 
maintenance behind the scenes. So this is a little bit about the reality of owning an RV. There's the bed. We have to flip the cushions up when Pat needs to get to the fresh water tank, which is on my side of the bed. Everything just gets piled into chaos. We did some work to the cushions in the fall. I took the mattress that we had in our tiny house. I cut it up. It's now the bed in the scamp, which is much more comfortable. I redid the foam inside of these because the original scamp foam is very firm and it was not comfortable. So we were thinking about throwing these out, but what I did was actually just put the new softer foam inside the same covers. So it still has the same aesthetic. Not that I love the dark brown, but they fit and it helps us to redo our bed when we put the bed extension on. I just added some Velcro back here to hold it in place when we're moving because my constant goal is to try to tie things down in such a way that when we get to our destination, I don't have to spend time fixing, rearranging, moving, putting things away. They just kind of stay as best they can. I actually refinished the table um, a couple days ago because we had some stains and scratches on here. I had used the same polyurethane on here that we used to finish the countertop in the tiny house. And if you've followed the videos, <laughs> the saga of the uh, tiny house renovation, the butcher block has been just a constant source of irritation because the polyurethane never prevented stains. And I used the same one on here. So same thing, I had to sand it uh, I put another coat of yellow paint on here because that was chipping a little bit and then I used the good polyurethane that I like. So this table is going to be a lot more durable. There was like a big coffee stain over here that was <laughs> annoying me every time we went somewhere. So that's gone. The table looks really nice. It's going to be a lot more durable. We're getting ready for possibly switching out the toilet. That's going to be a little bigger job. I don't think either of us are in the mood for that today, but basically this is the scamp toilet and it is, it's a ceramic bowl. So this has a lot of weight to it. The height is awkward and we're thinking that in order to save weight and save water, this toilet is going to have to go. So that's going to be a future project. Um, but the other stuff that I'm working on, I'm putting a space down here with these hooks that I added the other morning to hold our Berkey because we want to be able to bring our Berkey when we are traveling because campground water doesn't always taste that great. And what else? I have a couple things that I'm going to fix with the fridge and um, probably getting some more Velcro mesh to organize the space a little bit better. So that's the project list for right now. The scamp is clean. The fresh water is going to be all set. And then hopefully next weekend we will be ready to do something fun because that is the point of all this, isn't it? <laughs> we put the work in so that hopefully we'll get to go out and uh, enjoy what the scamp is meant to do. Patrick and Redford were checking the tire pressure and topping them off. I went inside to change some of the interior batteries. One of the things we like to do is put new batteries in the carbon monoxide detector and the smoke detector. Oh, okay, working <laughs> for the beginning of the season. And then I'll do a smoke detector. I put the bed back together so Redford is happy. <laughs> He loves when we bring the scamp over, he goes to the door, comes right in, hops on the bed. He loves being in the scamp, which is so nice. I'm glad he enjoys it. And he is super ready to go on a trip with it, just like we are. But we have a couple more things that we need to do. Specifically, we are trying to pay extra close attention to the rust that we have on the trailer because our scamp is now 10 years old and it has been outside in the weather for 10 years and that starts to take a toll, especially on the metal parts. The fiberglass of the scamp is very durable 
and we were doing a lot of research before we got the scamp we knew we wanted a fiberglass trailer because of the lightness but most importantly because of the longevity there are some people who take really good care of their campers and stay up on the maintenance and they've had their campers for 20 years or more so that's the hope especially because this morning we were looking at the prices of used rvs and we were like yeah we're going to stick with the scamp for quite a while because the prices are just so high. They've gotten a little bit better as the pandemic has sort of calmed down a little bit and people are able to do more things, but the prices are still really high. And that means that we are going to definitely take extra good care of the scamp and try to keep it for as long as possible because I think upgrading to another rig and especially another tow vehicle is just, it's just really not good timing right now to be buying either a vehicle or an RV just yet. We have two different sets of curtains in the Scamp. These are our winter ones, the red Gore-Tex. down. They're nice because they don't allow a lot of airflow and a lot of times we will put the Reflectex underneath that and it holds it in place a little bit better. And this little strip of Reflectex is still there. So then for the summer, we put the curtain rods up and we have these other curtains that are kind of a, a little bit of a sheer fabric so there's a bit more airflow and you can still get some light during the day if you're at a campground and you want more privacy but we still want the windows open for the airflow then we can put these kind of lighter sheerer ones up so that's one of my projects for the change of season is to switch to the summer curtains i was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying that They've noticed a lot more used campers for sale recently. And I really wonder if the whole idea behind that is so many people bought RVs during the pandemic because it was a good thing to be able to get out and do and still be able to enjoy yourself a little bit. But they were maybe just so focused on that idea of camping and RVing. I think the same thing applies to tent camping, just so focused on the actual process and not the behind the scenes work that goes into before the trip and after the trip and all the maintenance and all of the money that you put into a hobby like that, that maybe a lot of people who purchased RVs during the pandemic maybe started to realize that and are now selling them. Um, it's hard to say, but I could totally understand that because if you don't really love and want to dedicate your time and energy to this hobby or to this lifestyle, it is a lot to give up and a lot to pay for, for those experiences once in a while on the weekends. Um, it also takes a, a fair amount of energy because we, at the beginning of the week we're thinking like okay it's gonna be somewhat good weather this weekend and we haven't taken the scamp out yet the wedding is done all of that stuff um, is settled so now we can actually go out and do something with the scamp so in our heads early in the week we were like okay we'll we'll get the scamp on saturday morning we'll finish all of the maintenance that we have to do we'll take it out to a harvest toast we'll have a fun night we'll bring it back on sunday clean everything up and put it away the reality was that when we got to Friday, we were both really tired and work takes a lot out of us and we did not feel like running over to grab the scamp and packing for a trip and doing a bunch of maintenance in order to get out this weekend. So what happened was we kind of relaxed and did our normal like gym and ran our errands on Saturday to recuperate. And then on Sunday, finally got our scamp chores done. So I think that's the other thing that people don't realize is they think that they'll be like out every single weekend doing things, having fun. But for us, because of the preparation that it takes and with both of us having a full-time job, the lack of energy <laughs> by the end of the week, um, we're not like jumping to do a bunch of things to get ready for the trip. So we 
try to travel pretty regularly and we really push ourselves to make that happen even though it is challenging but for sure it's important to understand that if you have a full-time job especially a demanding job that takes a lot of your energy you're probably not going to be um, jumping to like do a bunch of stuff and pack the scamp and then when you get to the campsite you have to set everything up so there there's a fair amount of work involved in it to make any given trip happen especially if you were trying to cram it into your weekend got the winter curtains down those will go underneath the bed until it starts to get cold and I've got the summer curtains up there since they sit on a curtain rod of course when we're moving a lot of times the curtain rods would fall off so what I did was wrapped a rubber band to hold each of them to a little piece attached to the wall and then I just moved the curtain over just enough so that you can't see it and uh, it's nice. I think it looks really cute with these. I kind of like the change of season. It is an extra chore to do, but I like changing the look of the scamp a little bit. So um, getting closer to actually doing something with the scamp this year. Put the Velcro on the other two cushions right there to hold that one in place. Under there. So hopefully when we're moving, those will stay in place. Curtains and curtain rods will stay in place. These camping pillows that we got, we're just kind of putting them there during the day. They make really great lumbar support pillows and I'm all about lumbar support. So those are very comfortable to put there or um, probably when we're moving, I'll just throw them on the bed and they'll stay hopefully contained in that vicinity, but the scamp is starting to actually look like she is ready for travel. So that's exciting. It's about time. We got a couple of our projects done today and at the very least, the scamp is looking quite a bit cleaner. We still have some of these marks underneath the windows that I'm hoping are gonna come off and we're still going to have to put a coat of wax on. I think that's just a good thing to do every year because she spends a lot of time under the trees and gets a lot of stuff on her. And the upcoming projects are going to be figuring out what we're doing about the toilet and then this space right here is where we took the furnace out and we're either going to have to make a new door for that or figure out some other way of covering it or creating some sort of storage in that space because of course we can't uh, lose out on storage space, but getting there, getting closer to uh, being able to do something. Got the scamp back over at the storage lot. We're not allowed to keep it at our lot overnight. It's just the, the rules here. Anything, um, anything else has to go into the storage lot. So here's kind of the spots that we are concerned about. You can see some of the rust on the trailer um, and we're thinking maybe in a few months maybe toward the fall or oh yeah see that shouldn't happen when the RV season is starting to slow down we might try to find a place where we can get some work done to address some of the rust you know even the holder here Pat replaced this holder for the propane last season because this was very rusted but it's already got like little little spots of rust on it so it's confusing to me that these things don't get painted better or coated with something that's really more conducive to being outside year-round in um, all sorts of weather but I guess <laughs> I guess the deal is that RV maintenance is a big business and replacing RV parts is a big business so it is kind of in their best interest not to make things that are going to last a super long time but overall we are hoping to have the scamp for another 10-15 years hopefully so those are things that we're gonna have to address if we want the scamp to be rolling <laughs> for the foreseeable future because uh, yeah as much as we would love to maybe have something like a truck camper the <laughs> the process of switching to a new tow vehicle and a new rig is just not in the cards right now but 
who knows we'll see what happens in the next year or so how things in the rv market change and uh, how our needs change in terms of what we're doing but for right now we love the scamp even though it is a lot of work and a lot of maintenance but we still really enjoy working on the scamp and doing things at the scamp so we are going to be rv owners for the foreseeable future thanks so much for hanging out with us while we get the scamp ready for travel season make sure that you are subscribed so that when we actually take the scamp out to do fun things you'll be able to come along with us and if you would like to support the production of our videos head over to our patreon page for as little as a dollar you can get behind the scenes access and you will see the videos before any advertisements are added in about you and me the injustice the next president to be the news and watch hear your career it's time for you to face those fears and it's all fair to be aware and i'll be there so don't be scared just take a deep breath of air and one two three to ten you begin to focus again and though time flies have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us